her as someone you'd probably be kind of scared of. But our, our Amara, let's welcome Emily Swallow. And next up, we have, well, you could call him one of two people. <laughs> but to us, he will always be Lucifer. Let's welcome Mark Pellegrino. And Frankie. Yeah, I was going to say, if you brought a friend. Mark, what is your friend's name? Frankie. Frankie, okay. Okay, not, not Nick. Okay, that's probably a good thing, Rick. And last but certainly not least, we get our wonderful Mary Winchester, Samantha Smith. All right, well, first off, I would like to thank the three of you for coming, for being here. Thanks for having um, us. Yeah, it's been one of those years, you know, that every day I look at my list of my guests and I'm like, oh good, they're still here. <laughs> You're still coming. So thank you very much. And all of you appreciate it too, right? Yeah. Now we do have some people um, that are doing some audience that are everybody getting their cards and their pens to write their questions and giving them back and all that. Okay. Okay, well, while you continue to do that, I have a question for you guys. I saw, Mark, I saw a GalaxyCon interview with you where you had said that you kind of wished that Lucifer would have had kind of a redemption arc. And what my question is for all of you is, and I would like you to explain that a little bit more, what you meant, but also my question for all of you is, do you, what would you like to have seen for your character that maybe didn't happen? I would have liked him to have been a, a genuinely good dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I didn't have a dad growing up, and so I, I, I feel that put pressure on me to be extra conscientious, to, to bring to my family something I never grew up with. And I was hoping Lucifer would have the same kind of epiphany, but I think he's too malignantly narcissistic to do that, at least in some of the writer's eyes. Um, I know there are some. <laughs> the most, I should say. Uh, one, 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 I know, really, uh, one or two, I think, wanted him to have a redemption arc. And I think that would have been pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. But no, he was, he's, Lucifer's just bad to the bone, I guess. Okay. Emily, what about you? Uh, oh, man. I, I felt like I loved what they did with Amara up until that last moment when she just sort of got absorbed into Chuck. Because I love that we had this character who was presented as a villain, and yet one of the things I always appreciated about the writing was that you could see that her anger came from this deep hurt and this deep need. And I love that they explored that more, and in 15, you know, she, she tried to tried to gamble her blues away in Reno, but ultimately she still had that, that deep need for connection um, and wanted that from Chuck and couldn't get it and wanted that from Dean and couldn't get it and it just broke my heart that stupid pretty face Dean betrayed her. <laughs> I mean, okay, no, that, that is going to stay. I think that is going to stick. The stupid pretty stupid face Stupid pretty Dean. face? I will Somebody, stand by that. Anybody who comes to our fan panel on Saturday night, remind me if I don't actually say it during the course of the panel, bring it up. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, he, you know, I, she, she took a chance on humanity and actually had some hope and then she just got stomped on. Um, but I, I do, I was, you know, I, I wish that there could have been something a little more bleh, than just like getting absorbed into Chuck. I understand where it came from. I understand that she'd given up her hope on this other plan. And so the only one that she could really have, uh, not hope in, but some sort of, she knew Chuck, she, that was familiar, and there wasn't hope of something better. Um, but what I really wanted them to do, if Chuck was gonna absorb her into him, is I think they should have gone full steam ahead with it and had Rob Benedict come out with like half his face and half Amara. 
some like long hair on one side. And then it could have been something interesting, but instead we just got a stupid, pretty face rub. And it, it didn't always feel as complete for her. You didn't know exactly what was going to happen after the fact. Yeah. I mean, I guess she's hanging out with Jack now, which is nice. A little family bonding. Yeah. <laughs> just that kind of vacation you want. Yeah. And Samantha, what about you? Oh, okay. Well, the question was, what is what would you have liked to have seen happen for your character by the end of the show that that didn't happen? Your your character's end. What would you have changed about it if you could? Um, Besides not being dead. I mean, you know. Right. Uh, rather familiar with dying. Um, <laughs> I not being blown up would have been great. Um, I was joking that she should be the queen of heaven because she can run stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, Jack, I mean, you know, it, it was accidental murder. So um, he got to be uh, in charge of heaven. Mary's not bitter about that at all. Um, I, you know, I feel like, honestly, Mary, they gave Mary so much. Not just the first you know, solid seven seasons where she would come and go. But starting in season 12, like, the the art wasn't just, it was like mountains up and down and up and down and around. And I, I don't know what else they could have given me to do, honestly. Um, and I, I was warned that her death was going to be a catalyst for the final season, which it was. Mm -hmm. um, which, and honestly, I... <laughs> The send-off they gave her with not just the, the whole episode where we weren't sure what happened to her, but then the next episode where they had, you know, flashbacks and you got to see the Mary that her detractors always wanted to see, like the nurturing, kind, not just leaving all the time mom. Um, I, so I, I, don't, I don't know that there was anything. I really feel like they explored just about every nook and cranny of her okay. possibility. Okay, do we have some <clears throat> excuse me, some audience questions here? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay, so the first question is from Cal. So Cal, if you want to stand up. Um, yeah. What was the makeup routine like when Lucifer's vessel was deteriorating? <laughs> what was that like? Yeah, what was the makeup routine like? Can you, can you repeat that again, please? You might have yeah. to. But since we have the mic condoms, you might have to speak a little closer. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that out loud, but that was definitely yeah. I, I think I heard the question, but do you want to repeat it for everybody else? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll speak louder because I have a mask and a mic Wait, do you change on. these mic condoms after each use? Yes, I do. Do you change the mic condoms after yeah. each use? Yeah. So th this is a fresh mic condom? Yeah, this is a fresh mic condom. Time, I promise. <laughs> Crowley <laughs> hasn't used this mic condom. <laughs> he, has, he has not. When he Thank was God. two years ago, we didn't have them anyway. So. Uh, oh. Uh, I see. <laughs> okay. I'm joking. So, um, this question's from Cal. What was the makeup routine like when Lucifer's vessel was deteriorating? Um, it was a really simple one. They put they put this. You guys who are makeup artists in this uh, audience probably know the name of this stuff better. It's like this gel they put on there and then they pushed it around so it looked like holes and then they painted painted in the scabs, basically. And the whole thing probably took 35, 45 minutes. I, th I thought the real painful makeup job was, was, uh, was the one where, uh, I'm forgetting my own episodes. Um, <laughs> You know the one where Nick gets all burned up. Or oh, oh yeah. yeah, that was that was fairly <laughs> were, that was fairly unpleasant. That was a lot of prosthetic uh, applications of pieces, and uh, and it's not so bad putting it on. It's the taking it off that that's awful because they they have to uh, they have to peel it off, but they have to peel it off with this toxic, like oil-based, horrible chemical. And it's and they, and it just it basically is all over your body by the time they're done, and you feel it gets in your eyes and your mouth. It feels like you've been slimed. Um, it's pretty awful. 
but uh, they did a great job. Yeah, the, 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 the original makeup was quite simple um, and elegant. I, lo I liked that it was simple because it was elegant. Trishy also, was it Trishy who did it? No, Freedom? no, no, some special oh, effects. Oh, yes. Um, this was, this was, we're talking about season five, yeah? Way, way, way back before, then. Way before. So the peeling doesn't sound that great. They, so they do peel it and not rip it? <laughs> yeah, really yeah, but they have to peel slowly and put the, the oil-based uh, toxic mm -hmm. chemical on <laughs> as they go. Oh. And it's at the end of the day when you, you know, you've had this on for 12, 14 hours and then you're sitting there in the chair and they're like, with a the brush, they're like, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and you're just like, get it off. And the toxic oil-based chemical is just dripping into your mouth and into your mouth and into your digestive system. <laughs> this is sounding better and better. It sounds like its own version of hell. You didn't have to be on the set. That's right. So glamorous being an actor. <laughs> You're glad you